Gordon Ramsay, one of the finest chefs in the world, came to America on a mission, guaranteeing he would mold one of these 12 people into a master chef. The one of you who excels the most can win your dream restaurant. In his search, Chef Ramsay challenged them. I'll do the lamb if you can't do it. No talking, concentrate. Disciplined them. And if you all just shut up, we'll do it perfectly. Start the table again. And pushed them to their limits. It's on the same table, Elsie. I know what I can and cannot do. Hurry up. This is one thing I can't do. Hours after arriving, the 12 aspiring chefs got their first taste of his world-class reputation. That is absolute dog that same night, they were split up into teams and thrown into the fire. Tonight, Hale's Kitchen is open. In their first dinner service, the teams were assigned to work in two kitchens. <gasps> oh my god, I don't have the potatoes. And Chef Ramsay quickly realized turning one of these people into a master chef was going to be harder than he ever imagined. Do it again, okay? Carol Ann, get on the stove and help. Yes. Did you hear my question? Answer it! This restaurant is sinking faster than a Titanic. Shut it down. When it came time to send someone home, Chef Ramsay had to choose between Dewberry, a baker from Georgia, and Carol Ann, a server's assistant from New York. Carol, Hell's Kitchen no longer needs you. In week two. Get your fingers right down inside. It was so gross, first day in the morning. After a slimy lesson in squid cleaning, both kitchens got off to a good start during the next dinner service. That's nice. There we go. Crispy bacon, hallelujah. But it wouldn't last. You really want me to serve that? No, chef. Move, stop the table. In the red kitchen, Dewberry couldn't handle the heat. You don't care, you do you? No, at this point, no, I don't. You don't care? No. You're useless, you know that? I am. Goodbye. Do it, do it, do it! He was trying to get me to be, I guess, better than I am. When it came time to send someone home, it was an easy decision for Chef Ramsay. Dewberry. Never, ever turn your back on the team. Then, Jeff, the finance manager from New Jersey, had a problem with a kidney stone. Uh, Are you OK, Jeff? Uh, whatever. And he didn't get any sympathy from his teammates. Don't Let fucking talk my to sense. me that way. On the blue team, Ralph emerged as a leader. You got bacon? No! Come on. During dinner service, Wendy had a hard time with the basics. Why did you put cold water in there? I thought cold water was supposed to boil faster than hot water. What? And in the red kitchen, Jeff had problems all evening. I've never been on a fucking line before. Come here, you. Come here. Come here. If you don't like me, I don't yeah. know what to tell you. Move your ass! Then he cracked under pressure. Send my ass home. I've had enough of this bullshit. Jeff quitting for good was the final straw in the worst dinner service in Chef Ramsay's career. Shut it down! The blue team lost, and Chef Ramsay had to choose between Wendy and Andrew. Wendy, it's painful working with you, you know that. After being totally disgusted with their poor performances in the kitchen. This is painful! Chef Ramsay guaranteed safety to the team that served all of its diners first. We need to prove to ourselves what we're capable of doing. After a reward of relaxation. This is the proper use of a cucumber. The blue team got off to a strong start in the kitchen. Jessica, very nice at Wellington. Thank you, Chef. But it was short-lived. I want three beautiful risottos. And then the red team accomplished a first in Hell's Kitchen. The final ticket. Serving all of their diners. Jimmy, start dancing like a ballerina. Move. Good job, sweetie. I'm proud of myself and the guys are proud of me. As best on the losing blue team, Jessica nominated her friend Mary Ellen and nobody's friend Andrew, confident he'd be the one leaving. But Chef Ramsay had another idea. Mary Ellen, take off your jacket. You're leaving Hell's Kitchen. A week later. We're double booked. It was pasta night in Hell's Kitchen. Red team, come on. Let's go. And there were two dinner seatings. One team will cook and one team will serve. Then we'll turn around. The teams alternated working in the kitchen. Just one four tortellini from you, Ralph. Nothing fucking more. And working on the floor. Would you like a tortellini? Stop touching yourself. The red team lost, and Michael was told to nominate two of his teammates. Chris let Michael know which way he would go. Because we might have to go Jimmy Alfred. All right, let's go do it, man. But Michael had his own plan. My second nominee is Chris. Chef Ramsay had to choose between Elsie, a mother of six, and Chris, an executive chef. Chris, give me a jacket. You're leaving Hell's Kitchen. By eliminating Chris, Chef Ramsay sent a message that growth and desire are more important than experience. 
In week six, Chef Ramsay tested their palates. Baby scallop? Well done. Elsie's taste buds won it for the red team. I'm going to teach you how to sip wine. So you go like this. Show me. <laughs> then he gave the teams their biggest responsibility yet. The menu is yours. The red team worked well together. How about scallops? Oh, yeah, scallops are great. While Ralph took total control of the blue team. I've got my main braised salmon. I'm not big on salmon. I think halibut's great. In dinner service, Andrew couldn't deliver on Ralph's halibut. Andrew, halibut, are they coming now, please? It wasn't about to get done in four minutes. It's not chemically possible. And in the end, Andrew and Ralph battled for their survival. I don't take responsibility for that dish. Andrew is responsible for preparing a dish. Spot on. That dish wasn't me. It wasn't mine. Andrew, give me your jacket. With Andrew gone, it was down to the final five. The health Kitchen is about to change in a very significant way. Thank you. Jacket. And for the first time, it was every chef for themselves. This is your first individual challenge. The finalists competed in a tableside challenge. The winner is Jimmy. The win gave Jimmy his high point in Hell's Kitchen. During dinner service. I'm Hello. trying to talk What's to this? you. I'm trying Get to back on your section. You. Things were turning disastrous for Jessica. It's clear you've given up because of your attitude. Well, work at it. And it wasn't much better for Jimmy. I'm asking you why are you putting fucking fish stock on a fucking risotto. Get it off. After taking the wrath of Chef Ramsay for weeks. Why is the fish in the pan? Jimmy finally had enough. Why isn't the fish? I'm trying to fucking do both at the same time. Come here, you. Come here, you. No. Jimmy, you're out. In week eight, Elsie's chicken soup. The person winning the challenge today is Elsie. Landed her in the spotlight. I'm gonna cook on television? While Elsie made her morning show debut. I won yesterday's challenge. Wait, you yeah. go, Elsie! The others plotted against her. You gonna carry her tonight? Nope. <laughs> During dinner service, Jessica got the kitchen off to a rough start. I may be busy, but I'm not slopping it out. Right, Chef. And that looks like pig shit. To get back on track, Chef Ramsay shook things up. Switch. Jessica on fish, Ralph on vegetables, Elsie on starters, Michael on meat. But the sudden switch to starters sank Elsie. It's on the same table, Elsie. I'm a mess. What can I tell you? And the others stuck to their plan and didn't bail her out. No one said a fucking word to me the whole night. I don't want to talk anymore. Elsie, give me your jacket. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Last week in Hell's Kitchen, the final three survival all came down to each chef's main course. Ralph, I did the beef chef. Michael, tuna chef. Jessica, you get the chicken. And you'll stay in Hell's Kitchen and depend on that dish. But what the finalists didn't know was that their own families would help determine their fate. Dinner service got off to a smooth start. This is orgasmic. But then Jessica hit a few bumps. This is just the worst. Ralph and Michael held it together. We got it, Michael. We got this, all right? Get on sites. And the final three accomplished another first in Hell's Kitchen. We have completed a fully booked dining room. Then the finalists were judged family style. All your families have been eating tonight. And they'll be helping me to decide on who has had the best dish. My favorite course was the tuna. Tuna. The tuna. That's five votes for Michael's tuna, three for Ralph's beef, and one for Jessica's chicken. Jessica, deep down inside, you know you weren't as good as Michael and Ralph. Tonight, just two remain. Ralph, the 36-year-old veteran chef from New York. Woman puts I sue! Let's win this thing. And Michael, the 27-year-old kitchen phenom from Los Angeles. All I care about is getting the service out. This game ain't for everybody, man. I need to see a new gear. Throughout this whole thing, Ralph has always been my biggest competition. You want to give me some fucking lip? Don't. I'm here to win, and I'm here to fight. I'm very confident that I can take him. You address me as chef. Tonight, it has to happen. Yes, yes chef. Yes, chef. I will win this chef, man. I've got everything on the line for this. Who will win their dream restaurant and claim the title Master Chef? Three, two, one. Tonight on Hell's Kitchen.
Well done to you both. Thank you. Thanks. Now the real work starts. Because one of you is going to win your very own restaurant. Now enjoy the moment with the family, please. <laughs> 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 it was really nice to see my wife because she instantly told me you can win, you know, you've got this, you can do it. I'm very proud of you. I love you. To see my girl and my mother and my <laughs> uncle, it was, such, it was a great feeling, you know. We have had no contact, there's no letters, there's no nothing. It's been a riot in here. Oh. <laughs> it's been hell. Are you working like 24 7? Yeah. This is hardcore. You are gonna win. Oh, I got it. Oh, I'm here. Okay. I love you. Okay. Our celebration was over. It was, it was short lived. It was definitely appreciated, but you know, who knows what tomorrow is? You know, we might be skydiving without parachutes. And I can't wait. <laughs> I think bye, Michael. Good luck. Bye, bye, Ralph. Good luck. After beating out 10 aspiring chefs, Ralph and Michael know that only one person stands in the way of their dream, each other. Dude, I'm worked to the bone. It's just been hell, and think about all the people that had come through, it's like a blur. I wonder what the 12 people, all with the same dream. Dream, yeah. yeah. I want this restaurant. It's what I want out of life. It's what I work hard for. It's what I've sacrificed for. And I'm gonna fight tooth and nail for it. I'm just always obsessed about owning a restaurant. It's a good obsession. I feel like a million dollars. My desire for this is so real and I want it so bad. I gotta win. I wonder what the devil's got in store for us today. Boswell. I need to see you guys in two minutes, please, yes? Two minutes in the dining room? In the dining room, yes. Yavo. Thank you. Bye-bye. OK. Bonsoir. Stupid idiots. During their stay in Hell's Kitchen, Michael and Ralph have faced many surprises from Chef Ramsay. They know by now it's all part of his master plan. Sit down. Good morning, guys. Good morning, morning chef. chef. And congratulations. Bloody well done. Really well done. It's been a long, hard, tough journey. And you are the final two. The best of the best. The biggest test ever lies ahead of you both. Michael, nothing disturbs you. And you have this really nice, calm air. There's going to have to come a day when you're going to have to be assertive. And you have the confidence to tell me from that little bit of assertiveness that I need coming out now. Three minutes for the starters, six main courses first. You got it. Tonight, it has to happen. Unleash the beast. Unleash the beast. And Ralph, you're the kind of man that is bang, a thousand mile an hour, ballsy, gutsy. I love your energy, but sometimes you move too quick for your own mind. You're getting the pan, you're frying the tomato, and it's splashing the fucking place, and we can't clean it. Yes, chef. Because you're just banging hours if you don't care. And you told me you do fucking care. I do, chef. So care, then. All right. So the final two. Who's going to win? I'm going to win. Yeah, I'm going to win. That's the shortest answer you've ever given me, Ralph. It was the easiest question you ever asked me. <laughs> OK, guys, stand up. Ralph? Yes, Chef. Michael? Chef. This is your final test. Ralph, this side of Hell's Kitchen is your restaurant. Michael, this side of Hell's Kitchen is your restaurant. All right. You're both going to design your dream restaurant. You're going to write and create your menus. You're going to run the kitchen. And you're going to both run your dining rooms. You're both going to go head to head the same night. Now, start thinking of your dream restaurant. This is the test I've been waiting for this whole time. 
It's really gonna show if we have what it takes to run a restaurant. I think I have a, uh, a slight advantage on Michael. I'm going after the win. I'll pull out every stop. I'm telling you, he's a great guy, but I gotta win. Ralph and Michael have only 56 hours to transform Hell's Kitchen into their very own restaurants. To pull it off, Chef Ramsay is making sure they have all the support they need. John Jannes is our designer. He built Hell's Kitchen. He's gonna help you with the color, texture, fabric, so you've got the best of the best. JP, you're gonna tell JP exactly what style of service you want to create. And of course, your sous chefs, Scott and Marianne. They're gonna help with the menu. Excellent. You guys have got a lot to do and very little time to do it in. And good luck, I'll be watching every step of the way. Let's go. First off, for both chefs, a crucial meeting with John, the designer. Good to see you. Congratulations. Thanks a lot, man. They must make decisions on everything from wallpaper and paint to napkins and silverware. So talk to me. We have a lot of ground to cover. I'm going for a party. I'm going to, you know, I like people having a good time in the place. I like very simple, very plain. I don't like colors. I'm really into less is more. I got a big mirror going on up there. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's some characters on the wall. As far as going back in the booth, I like it to be like very private. You guys a little more privacy. Most definitely. You know, sharing is is encouraged. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, it's so hard to get all of this stuff out of your brain and, you know, out of your mouth and onto paper. All right. I'm excited and I hope you are. I've got a, a lot of great ideas. I think that the, the customers are gonna enjoy the room that we're gonna design for them. I'm very excited about it all. John, thanks a lot. I'm gonna go back to the kitchen. Next, the finalists meet with Jean-Philippe, who has been the maitre d' since Hell's Kitchen opened. He will be supervising the front of house needs for both restaurants, starting with the waitstaff. Okay, now we're gonna talk a little bit about your uniform. I think I would like to have them in black trousers and a black shirt. You want the ladies to wear trousers as well? Yeah. It's kind of sad to, 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 to see them walking around unisex. And, and unisex. The men are men and women are women, and there's no reason to dress them alike. No. Uh, Do you want the ladies to wear some uh, black panties? Excuse me? Leggings? Uh, mm -hmm. Pantyhose? Mm -hmm. I have to think about those things, I tell you. Construction on their restaurants begins immediately. All right. Meanwhile, Ralph and Michael get busy on the most critical element for a successful restaurant, the menu. I took the opportunity to write down some menu items that I had been wanting to do, like halibut, pheasant, duck, short ribs. My menu right now is a work in progress. I'm gonna do sirloin steak, I'm gonna do filet mignon, a butter poached lobster, but I'm gonna twist them out, you know, Italian style. While Michael and Ralph pack it in early, the transformation of Hell's Kitchen continues. Construction crews work through the night in a race to get both restaurants ready. In just 36 hours, their dining rooms will be filled with customers. No paper, no walls. I could see the room starting to take shape, but the curtains weren't up yet. I've gotta get the wallpaper done. I've gotta get the tabletop ready. I had to work with my imagination still. Morning, Ralph. Send it to me, yes, provolone, yes. Nice. You know, walking out today for the dining room for the first time, it's the reality it hit, you know, the place has been gutted out. There's construction going on, the, the, the process is happening, and it's, it was amazing. How are we doing, John? We got a little problem. No. The uh, wallpaper company made a little mistake. Yeah. We have less than half of what we need. That's not going to work for me. We're going to try to ship it from Pennsylvania, you know, pick it up at the airport tonight, midnight, if that's what it takes to do it. That's our, that's our first snafu of the day. John, how are you? 
Very good, good morning. We're opening tomorrow night. Um, I'm not 100% certain on their styles. Um, this feels like it's going to be cold, contemporary, stark. Well, we have, we're maintaining the warm woods. Yep. So while we're balancing it with cool surfaces, we are still tying it back into warm materials. Mm -hmm. Michael's restaurant is very Hollywood, fresh, very bright, very contemporary. The problem sometimes when you've got a contemporary room, people don't want to really stay that long. And um, next door, uh, Ralph, that feels like a sort of modern bistro steakhouse, no? He, he's trying to strike the balance between a traditional steakhouse with a couple of twists. I don't think that's clever. I, I, I agree. It is their restaurant. That's the most important thing. Ralph's dining room is 1920s Art Deco, sort of peasant style. Italian cookery. I expected someone like him to come up with something more original. Well, uh, I'm nervous. Okay. I'd like to tell you that. When you come through here again, I think you'll be a lot calmer. I hope so, John. Hey, gentlemen, two seconds, please. I go to restaurants, and the first thing I always look at is the signature dishes. People will travel across the world to get to any restaurant that has a great signature dish. Ralph, yes, chef. signature dish, what is it? I'm doing a, a bistecca Florentina, chef. It's a, a porterhouse steak for two Italian staff. Mm, interesting. Uh, one concern, can it be done for one? I'm just telling you to think about the practical side. Right. Customers come in, she wants a bit of fish, he wants a signature dish, he can't have it because already it's for two people only. There has to be a touch of flexibility between these things. Michael, signature dish, what is it? Short rib asabuku with uh, roasted red garnet yams and then I finish it with uh, the natural juices from the braising liquor. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. I'd like to see both of your signature dishes All right. now. All right. Let's go. I'm doing a porterhouse steak for two, which is, you know, the Rolls Royce Cadillac and any other car you think of with the, all the luxuries in the world. That's the thing I'm selling tomorrow night. You know, I'm selling a great steak. I chose the braised short ribs as my signature dish because the whole way through, every bite that you take of it, it's, it's rewarded with great flavor. Oh, that's nice. OK, guys, ready? All right, Ralph. Ralph's Porterhouse steak. It's a very masculine steak. I really expected something at this stage a little more inspiring. OK, Michael, bring it here, please. OK. Michael's short rib Osabuka. It was beautifully braised. It was very fine, a very sort of delicate, nimble dish. They smell nice. They both look very presentable. And chefs shouldn't really cook for themselves. We should be cooking for our customers. So, I'm not going to taste them. I'm going to put you to the real test now and take your dishes onto the streets. And we'll ask the public what they think of those dishes. Ready? Yes, yep. chef. Let's get our dishes and go. Both Michael and Ralph have come a long way since their first signature dishes. Just now. Let me tell you something. Yes, sir. You've got a palate like a cow's backside. Yes, chef. That. It's disgusting. Why the hot and cold noodles? Because I think they go good with the tuna. The tuna's got a little spice to it. And you work professionally in the restaurant. That's true. With that shit. With their dream restaurants at stake, it's more important than ever that their new signature dishes impress the customers. In this case, people on the street. OK, a uh, little competition. You know what I'm like with my competitions. We're going to have a little battle. So we're going to stop customers as they walk past, potential customers, and ask them which dish they prefer. Oh. And like all the challenges, there is an advantage for the winner. I'll let you know that later. OK? OK. Let's go. Have you got two seconds, please? Um, this one is made by Michael. May you taste it, please? And then let me know what you think. Uh, wonderful. Mmm. Then have a little taste of Ralph's. That's a porterhouse steak with a wild mushroom ragu. Three kinds of mushrooms, one kind of brandy, and lots of love. Now, which one would you prefer? I like this one. You like this one? Oh, lovely. One nil to Michael. This one here. Ooh. Love you, man. Thank you. Yeah, you know, I think that me and Ralph are really different in a lot of ways. What he has in his, like, charisma, I sort of make up for in my food itself. OK, out of these two signature dishes, which one do you prefer? Quick. I don't want that one, I think. That one? I didn't try that one. Oh, dear, I don't want that one. 
I can't lose another challenge. You know, I owe it to myself to bring my best game. I can't let him beat me. Right here, I have a grilled porterhouse steak. It's a prime piece of meat. Only 3% of the meat in this country is graded prime. That's one of them right there. This is the finest piece of meat you're going to find, bud. Let, let me try this. Get in there. Let him eat, Ralph. For God's sake. I'm just telling him what it is. Like a Cadillac, right? Mm. Mm. Power steering, power mm. brakes, power windows, and mm. telescopic steering. And what do you have here? You ready? So these are both signatures, one from Ralph and one from Michael. Oh, my God. Mm. It's going to be his. Ralph tends to panic once he's losing. So in the state of panic, he becomes like a salesman trying to sell polish or dusters. Prime meat, only 3% of the meat in this country is prime. That's one of them. Porterhouse, grilled, the chef's special recipe. Tell me everything I know. Wild mushroom ragu, cremini mushroom, shiitake mushroom, morel mushroom. Oh! So which one would you prefer? Probably the prime rib. I think I like this one. You think you like the steak? He was almost forcing the customers to tell that his food was better than Michael's. Which I like one this prefer? one. Right? Thank you very much. One made by Ralph, obviously, and one made by Michael. Out of those two dishes, which one would you prefer? I like this one. Beautiful. Which dish would you go to the restaurant for? That one. I have to say I like that oh, one. This one. This one. Yeah. Thank you. That one. Yeah. I like this dish, but I like you more than him. <laughs> Ralph, you know, he's a great salesman, but, you know, my food definitely did the talking for me. I totally blew him out of the water. It felt good. Twelve? To six. Yeah. Yeah, not bad, but a bit of a whitewash. <laughs> Michael's dish had an unfair advantage in the fact that his dish was built for street food and my dish was built to be served in the dining room. Whatever, I'm gonna win tomorrow, so it doesn't matter. Right, should we go? Yes. Yeah, yeah we got a restaurant to open. Hell yes. Two restaurants to open. After being away from the restaurants for a few hours, Michael and Ralph eagerly check the progress of their dining rooms. Nice. Overwhelming is a word that could describe the amount of detail that has to be done uh, in the next 24 hours or less. Hey, Good to see you. Good to see you. We were just looking at uh, the drapery work going on, making some decisions. Uh, it's a little different from what I envisioned. It's going to look beautiful. I think as they progress, you'll get a clearer, right. clearer yeah, idea of what it really looks like. You know, right now I feel that we're hurrying, and when you hurry, you never get exactly what you want. You know, again, you know, Casablanca meets the speakeasy meets Ralph. He meets Ralph. Yeah. You know, it's a really great feeling to see your vision start to take a tangible presence. It's really cool. We've made a lot of progress since this morning. I love the, uh, the backlights. And the wallpaper's looking terrific. Yeah. That is a pretty nifty fixture. Vision. With the dining room starting to take shape, the chefs return to the kitchen to focus on their food. They know they're only 24 hours away from taking charge of their own kitchens. Uh, Michael, Ralph, two seconds, please. How are you feeling? Good. Great. Yes? Yes. Now, tomorrow night, you're both going to be running your very own restaurants. Yeah. And like all good restaurants, you're going to be running it from the central point of control, the hot plate. Yes, yes. chef. The pass, also known as the hot plate, is where the head chef controls the kitchen. Until now, it's been the sole domain of Chef Ramsay. One Caesar salad, one tomato soup, one risotto, one spaghetti and lobster. Eight minutes on the hot plate. This is where he calls out the orders and also maintains quality control. That looks like a dog's dinner. Oh, fuck yourself. Get it in the bin. Now, we're going to take it in turns, running that hot plate, and we're going to cook for the construction team that are actually making your restaurants as we speak. Hey, guys, you're going to get fed tonight. There you go. Right. Yes? They sound hungry. Yes, they do. You have got to treat this as if this is your restaurant. OK? Ready? Ready. Yeah? Ralph, you jump in the kitchen. Michael, you're on the hot plate with me first. Yes? Right. Let's go. I'm getting a little nervous. Stepping into uh, to Chef Ramsay's shoes, his shadow, it's, it's, it's tough. The risotto, the salmon. Oh, salmon. And the panna cotta. Thank you. Your salad. This dress rehearsal will give Chef Ramsay an indication of how well Ralph and Michael will run their kitchens tomorrow night. First ticket, please. Okay. Thank you. Ready for the first order? Yeah. Take it away. All right, you guys, listen up. I got two tomato soups, three Caesar salads, one risotto. Second course, two lamb, two wellington, one salmon, one risotto. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Thank you. I think I'll have the edge over Michael at the pass because he doesn't have a booming voice. Two things. Um, first and foremost, important, not loud enough. Yeah. And you read it out like you're reading a dictionary, a bedtime story. But you've got to be vibrant. Yeah. 
And if they can't hear you, position yourself to here and come onto the, under the canopy. Okay. And then bam, back over, up and over. There's nothing worse when you're just about to start a really busy night and your cooks can't hear you. Michael may be the talented chef. However, if you can't bring it together on the night, you're going to sink. One big shot at this. And you've so got to get it right. My politeness is really a downfall in the Hell's Kitchen here. I too easily become friends with somebody, and it's something that I gotta have to learn how to uh, get under control. All right, you guys away, table 24. These two are well done. Voila. Nice. We have our well done beef wellington. Michael, he hadn't said anything to any of his team. Then all of a sudden, he just put his head down, and he turned around to them and said, You guys cook like old people fuck. And I thought, my god. Uh, that came out of the blue. Yeah, I wouldn't expect something like that to come out of his mouth. Yes, chef. <laughs> Thank you, chef. However, he started understanding how he has to put energy into his team. Are right, you guys, hey, clear this down. We're done, OK? Yes, chef. As the kitchen resets, new orders are being taken, and Ralph takes his turn at the pass. OK, listen up. Two guests, table 31. One risotto, one Caesar salad, one lamb requested medium. Yes, yes chef. chef. You know, there's no place I'd rather be other than sitting in that hot pass. It's second nature to me. Pick up. The service. 36. One more table, listen up, two covers, table 32. One tomato soup, one Caesar. Ralph took to it like water off a duck's back, just straight at it. Boisterous, charismatic. One lamb, one Wellington. Lamb requested medium well, Wellington medium well. Yes, yes chef. chef. Someone that you'd wake up and say, okay, I'm gonna cook for this bugger because he knows his stuff. Let's go, let me have a little movement, please. How long in the risotto? Michael, how long on these starters, please? Waiting right now. Michael, I have people waiting for starters. I don't want you banging it out, understand? Yes, sir. Sure. This is your reputation on the line now tomorrow. Don't forget that. Absolutely. With Ralph excelling at the pass, Michael is looking to expose any weaknesses Ralph may have. I'm trying to see how many can go without having crab in them. What are you talking about? It's my risotto. I, I wanted to make risottos the whole night without crab. I was just seeing what I could slip past Ralph tonight. Ralph, have to taste. I tasted it. You tasted it, yeah? Yes. In my head, I was just sort of laughing, like, I can't believe he's letting him go like that. Uh, Jean-Pierre, away, please, uh, table 34. Jean-Philippe. He keeps on calling me Jean-Pierre. My name is Jean-Philippe. I've been working now for so many weeks with the man, and he keeps on calling me Jean-Pierre. I mean, I'm going to kill him, I'm telling you. Ralph failed to notice that the crab risotto is missing at the crab. What kind of risotto is that? It's like mushroom and crab, but there's no crab. Oh, yeah. Lamb, medium, salmon, how long? Right now. Right now, chef. Right now. Uh, Ralph. Yes. I've got a problem. The risotto is bland. And then he's telling me as well, how dare could you call it a crab risotto without crab in, in, in there? There's no crab in there at There's all? There's no crab in the risotto. Did you taste it? Yes, I did, but I didn't. Come on, big boy. Taste it. Quick. So we've got a construction worker with a hard hat on sending his risotto back because it had no crab in. I mean, that's got to be the biggest kick in the bollocks. Michael, what are you doing to me? What did I do? No crab in the crab risotto? Ralph. Right. You should know that. Yeah, that's why you've got to taste everything, yeah? You're in control, you're in the driving seat, and you should spot those kind of things, yeah? Yeah, risotto without crab. Makes me look like an ass. I can't have a crab meat risotto not have crab meat in it. It went out, it came back to haunt me. How long in the risotto with crab and One salt? Minute. One minute. Idiot. Sorry, chef. Don't sorry. Can I have you taste this, chef? Make sure it's perfect. Oh, I'm going to taste it. Don't you worry. Michael. Had Ralph looked stupid and took him down big time. That was an interesting lesson, but a very clever move from Michael's behalf. Ice cold, the crab. You got it. Ice cold. I got a freezer burn. Someone's broken, you happy with that? You're in control, your restaurant. Mm. And you're running like this tomorrow, we're in fucking trouble big time. Go. No. Ralph's biggest downfall is he'd rather just throw the food out and get clear they control the food and maintain standards. Uh, Ralph. Uh, Michael, please, two seconds. Just two seconds, quick. We've got to do better than that tomorrow. Both got strengths and weaknesses, but I think we've both got more weaknesses than strengths right now. Michael, you're running your staff. Your staff are not running you. Ralph. Yes, sir. Assertiveness, strong. Up there. Quality-wise, down there. If I could take Ralph's assertiveness and insert that in Michael's body, I think you've got yourself a very talented chef. Ralph, it's your restaurant tomorrow. And Michael, it's your restaurant tomorrow. And 
if you both run it like that, it's not going to be a good result at the end. In regards to Michael, he set me up, he set me up. Bottom line is, it's my job to catch the crab. It made me stronger, truth be told. So if he did attack me, I thank him for it, because tomorrow I will never let that happen. Any questions? Let's play down. I'm really gonna have to uh, do some soul searching and just somehow turn off part of me tomorrow night and just transform Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. In other words, I need to become more like Chef Ramsay. Let's go, dirty balls. Come on. Dirty ball. Come on. I don't fucking care. N no, don't fucking talk. I'm gonna talk to you. When I'm done talking to you, you shut your mouth and you work. I suggest you shut your mouth. Work, do something. Hey, hey, come here, come here. Now get away and lose some weight. Hey, come here, you. Here. come here. You. Go for a walk and lose some weight. <laughs> Michael's a rather soft-spoken guy, so it's something that he's certainly gonna have to work on for tomorrow night. Piss off. Wanker. You address me as chef, okay? Just trying out my assertiveness, you know? I like it, I like it, I like it. I'm worried that I have to yell, and I, I'm worried that I have to be a little more assertive. I just really need to learn to vocalize my thoughts. I don't want it to become an issue tomorrow night. <sighs> All right, Chef Ramsey. I don't think that uh, you believe I can pull this off, but you've put me in the opportunity to excel take what I want on my turn. I'm gonna get some sleep here tomorrow. You don't know what's gonna hit you. This is the day Michael and Ralph have been working towards since they arrived in Hell's Kitchen. They only have 12 hours to make sure everything is ready for the grand opening of their restaurants. Today is game seven of the World Series, the Super Bowl, the Kentucky Derby wrapped up into one. Eight lobster, put them in those roasted bell peppers, grilled corn. I have a battle plan. I know what I need. I have my prep lists. I just need to work my ass off and outwork Ralph. <laughs> Okay, what do we got? Now this is what I'm talking about. When I entered the room today, there had been substantial change. The wallpaper looks awesome. The lights look awesome. Brick on the walls. There's a Harlequin finish between the brick, kind of like jockey racing silks, and I like the ponies, so I'm very happy with everything so far. Exciting, exciting, exciting. Good morning to you. Good morning, sir. How are you? Um, the wallpaper came in, mm -hmm. so that's a plus. You know, mid-afternoon, we'll be done with that. I'm easy as long as I'm happy. I like the way the, even the shadow cast on that brick wall is pretty groovy. The room speaks for itself. It's all pretty incredible, you know, in, in less than 36 hours, we've gone from one restaurant to another. All right, groovy. Okay. I gotta make some muscle buka. All right. You do what you do, I'll do what I do. It's gonna be awesome. The designer, John, has really done a great job of, of putting my vision out there. Nice. The most impressive thing, I think, is the incorporation of wood and the panels that he put up were absolutely perfect. I really haven't had any snags yet. Cross my fingers. Michael. Good Hi, morning. Don. Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you? A couple things we gotta cover. The booths were supposed to be in here already. I don't have them yet. All right. That sucks. So that's, that's problem number one. Item number two you're a little bit too cool tone-wise. And I am really tempted to paint the beige section red. What do you think? Yeah, it's really hard without the booth to imagine, you know? No, it, I understand. Willing to take the chance? Yeah. We'll put the crews to work on it. It's okay, I appreciate the honesty. All right. I'm way anxious right now. I've got some problems here I've got to deal with, and you know, there's a lot to do. Michael. Ralph, two seconds, please. Nice spin. Good morning, guys. Good morning, Good morning. Jeff. I like it when you're there standing there with your arms over one another. Yes? There you go. Right. Tonight's the night. Hours from now, both of your restaurants are going to be open, and one of you is going to be crowned the winner of Hell's Kitchen. <laughs> How does that feel? Feels great. Oh, yeah. Now, the last and most important thing of any business is your kitchen staff, OK? And I've handpicked each and every one of these. And they've also worked alongside me in my kitchen. Ready? Yes, chef. 
meet your staff. Good morning, everybody. You don't care, you do you? No. You're useless, you know that. I am. Goodbye. Wendy. <gasps> oh my God, I don't have the potatoes. Excellent, you're beautiful. Andrew. Right when you thought it was safe to go back in the kitchen. Listen to me, yes. did you hear my fucking question? Yes. Answer it, okay? Yes, it's good. good. Jimmy. Hey. <laughs> Why are you putting fish stock on a fucking risotto? Get it off! Yeah. Elsie! Come on, you've got to get it together, sweetheart. Hey, I'm gonna get it together. I'm gonna so walk around and get back into the kitchen. Talk to me. Big team breath. One yes. minute out there. Hello? Yes. And when you come back, you come back to me. Yes, sir. Move. Jessica. All you're shouting okay. out of there is, I need more time for a lobster. Hello? Yep. I need a time. I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. Okay. Good morning, team. Good morning, morning chef. chef. Michael, yesterday you won the challenge. You get to pick first, one at a time. That's tough. Um... No conferring with Ralph. <laughs> I'm not conferring with him. I'm gonna fuck him. I picked Jessica first. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica was mine. He knew it, that's why he took her. Okay, Ralph, who's your first pick? My first pick, Chef, is gonna be Andrew. Andrew. So do me a favor, and fucking listen. And you wanna give me some fucking lip? Don't. I'm not giving you lip, I'm just saying don't freak out over the fucking... Okay. I gotta okay. Hey, you know what, right this now. ends now. No more bullshit in the kitchen, all right? Michael, are you ready for your second choice? Yeah, my good friend, Dirty Little Jimmy. I need that guy. Jimmy. <laughs> Join Jessica and Michael, please. Ralph. Chef. Yes. I could see the look of sort of dismay on Elsie's face. I thought they both would have gone for Elsie first and almost had a bit of a scrap over her. Ralph. Chef. Select your second member of your team. Wendy Lou, come on down. <laughs> when it came down to a choice between Wendy and Elsie, I chose Wendy. I look in her eyes and I know what she can do. I saw Elsie not cohesive in the kitchen. Elsie stayed around, she was great in challenges and she got great taste buds, but line service hurt her. Okay, Michael, last pick for you. Who's it gonna be? I love you, Dewberry, but... It's gonna be Elsie. <laughs> That's okay. Oh, I gotta say, I was a little insulted that I would wait, they waited so long to choose me. Am I bitter? Yeah! Not by default, Chef. I will gladly take Mr. Dewberry on my team. Just don't put me on meat and we'll be okay, won't we? <laughs> Surely the Wellington's rested. Fucking hell. Oh my God almighty. What are you trying to do? I'm confused. I don't know what I'm doing. It was it was fully expected for me to be picked last, and Ralph was so graceful about it. I definitely plan to do the most that I can for Ralph. Let's get cooking. I think for Ralph and Michael, the most important thing they can do now is really get together with their team and start establishing camaraderie. All right, number one, I want to bring you up to speed on what we're doing over here. And when it's all said and done, you guys would like to help me win this, I would be very appreciative. Of course, there's envy. I wish I was Ralph tonight, and it was my kitchen. After everything that happened between me and Ralph, I don't know if I'd necessarily feel comfortable in there. All right, let's get suited up, and uh, I'll be waiting for you. OK. Yeah. How do you feel? Good, I'm pumped, dude. <laughs> right. I was really hoping to have a bunch of you know, professional cooks. But I gotta deal with what I got. So what's for dinner? All right, first course is like a little seafood sampler, oysters, stone crab, and uh, prawns. Perfect. We'll make, we'll make sure you win. Thanks, guys. It, you know, and I was glad that I got the three people that wanted to hire back. I wanted to be in Ralph's kitchen. He's my boy. I always had a, an alliance with, uh, with Ralph. I love you, little one. I love you, too. I love Dewberry, but I really hope that that's a handicap for Ralph. And these things are what's going to be the, the details of success tonight. The attention to details was something that we've been schooled and thought about since we got here. And I'm not going to let that thing go by me, not tonight. No way. I made a little list for myself of points of success. So I had my team read them for motivational purposes. This is number four, do one thing perfect and not too okay. Tonight, I'd rather have absolute perfection on everything than eh on three things. I will be working the hot pass as the chef has. Calling, awaying, standbying. Are you doing it in the same, the same manner? Same manner. Okay. With Andrew, I'm concerned that he might get a little all over the place during things. In regards to Wendy, I think she could crumble 
under line heat service. Newberry's walked off the line once before. I gotta keep that in the back of my head. What I need today is strong people doing a good job. My professional career is on the line. Get that going now. Right. I'm gonna get him on something, him on something. Everybody's got a job to do. With so much at stake, Michael and Ralph have to rely on their former competitors to work for them, not against them. All right, you guys ready for stuff to do? Brand new menu, one day, no, I no idea what's going on, no problem. My dream is in your guys' hand right now, and I couldn't feel any more confident. All right, Andrew, mathematically, we got about two minutes, and those pumpkins got to be in the oven. I'm working on it, man. I want to be able to get all this prep done within four hours, right? We got four people times four is 16 hours of manpower right now. Do you understand I can afford no error? Do what? Where am I? Hey, Michael, can you come over here a second? The goose are actually coming in. All right. These are perfect. Great. This wouldn't have been the same without leather. Yeah. Uh, Ralph. Good job, Pierre. How are you? Jean-Pierre? If you call me one more time, Jean-Pierre, I'm gonna kill you. Since we opened the house kitchen, I've been pushed. Don't get in my face, buddy. Yell that. No, you. No, no here's the food. Whatever is gonna come to me tonight, I'm gonna give it to Michael and Ralph. I'm just a neutral person. I would like to introduce you to your staff. Okay, well, everybody, welcome to Frank and Lulu's. People might ask you, why is the name of the restaurant named Frank and Lulu's? They're two very people that are dear to my heart. One of them is my dog, one of them is my friend's dog. And I think they sound like a steakhouse. So Frank and Lulu's is the name of our restaurant. Say it with me out loud. Frank and Lulu's. Excellent, <laughs> great. Hi guys. Hi. So before I go over the menu, you know, yeah, I'm trying to be like kind of hip, cool, trendy place. You know, I'm not trying to have the service overshadow the food, to sort of complement it. I've decided on the name of Lola Pop. I'm from my restaurant. Where does the name come from? Lola's my wife's name. And uh, Lola Pop, that's uh, one of my pet names for her. And I thought it worked really well with the restaurant. Just, you know, I, I love her. And, you know, this is all a start of the future for me and wife. That's what tonight means for me. Oh, woo! The kitchens are working furiously. In the dining room, both restaurants are getting their final touches. All right. Andrew, can you get those artichokes on the water in 10 minutes? The whole box? Can you do it? No way. Can you make it 15? I can push, I'm pushing it. Turn the gas on, man. With an hour and a half left, Andrew is cutting it close. Ah! Oh, man. Did you cut yourself? Oh, that's bad. I, it was with the, the peeler. Oh, shit. I can't even look at that. Oh, Andrew, go get a netic. Um, Andrew cut his hand trying to peel the artichokes, and I think he did it pretty badly, and it looked pretty bloody and gory. You're going to the hospital. We are taking him. Release. I, need, I, I have to be back here as soon as possible. I'm not, I'm not letting his ass down. Absolutely, I'm working. OK, come on. Um, Andrew had to go over to the nurse and cut his finger. Beautiful. Andrew cut himself an hour and a half before service. That put us right to the edge. Andrew is going to the hospital. We're well, one man down. I'm counting on you. Hurry up. I cut my finger. I got to go to the hospital. And it's like, oh my god, I'm going to let Ralph down. We let the team down. Just because we're a man down, absolutely refuse to lose tonight. Let's go. This sucks. Come in. Yeah. Uh, Slight problem, um, Andrew. Man what down. Happened? What happened? Uh, he was turning on uh, artichokes and uh, got his finger. I Is he going to be back for service? I don't okay. know. Is there a plan in your mind if he's not back for service? Scott was going to be on the vegetable, Andrew was going to be on the meat. Yep. Right now, since uh, I have to be on the pass, I'm going to be on the pass and the vegetable pretty much working simultaneously in both stations. The right. only reason, the only, it's the only answer well, I have. Adaptation, you've got to. Okay, not good, one man down already. No. Uh, we haven't even started. Nope. Right, reveal the restaurant. Come. Thank you. So first thing, the impressions are what? We're walking in. Guests have arrived. With only one hour left until his grand opening, Ralph is feeling confident about the look of his dining room. It looks warm. Uh, it does really look warm. 
these are beautiful. Oh, they're great. Oh, they're yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Chrysler building. 19, in their 1920s. Yeah. Oh, uh, the, uh, it's lovely. And you know, that's what the whole place is. You know, the place is a throwback to the roaring 20s, is, is, right. my, is my design. It looks rich because of the drapes. Yeah. It's a little bit Baroque and sumptuous. Yeah. So that relates to the menu being rich? Uh, the menu is certainly rich. You know, it is a classic Italian steakhouse, uh -huh. is my interpretation thereof. Ladies, gentlemen, good evening. Um, so what's the idea behind this? In the old uh, classic Italian restaurants, a waiter always had a uh, red uh, vest on, a black pants, and a black bow tie going on with a white shirt. Since I don't really, I'm not crazy about that look, I like a little modern tip to it, a nice red shirt. It's got a little shine to it. The tie is modern for the women. A little bit of the fishnet stocking, but a tight fishnet, nothing uh, too over the top. And we have a nice skirt with a little bit of a slick going on there someplace, right? I think the gents look quite smart, very dapper. I think the ladies look like old grannies. Yeah, well. Like you're going to see your grandma. Do you feel like grandmas? Yes. yes. You do? Yes. OK, grannies. Sorry, Go around the corner and scratch your fannies. <laughs> OK, Ralph, I'll see you later. All right, thank you. Perfect. Sometimes it's, it's too much. But that's OK. OK, all right, because they're not going to have crackers at all. Michael, where are my steaks? Your steaks are in the walk-in. OK, Michael. Yes, chef. Ready to show off your dining room? Yes. Yes? Come I on. can't wait. Let's go. It's time for Michael to show his restaurant to Chef Ramsay. Nice thought. Wow. Wow. The first thing you realize when you come into this dining room, you know you're in California. It's yeah. bright. It's pretty. It's, it's, it's glamour. It's nice. Yeah, that's the kind of place I'd want to sit. On those nice leather seats. The leather boots are what like, tied the whole thing together for me. Uh -huh. That's what really made, yeah. made it happen. Without that level of sophistication, I'd be quite nervous because you've got all square tables here. Yeah. And it's quite difficult to make that work with all square tables. Now, there you go. See? Comfortable. Nice yeah. back in the corner here, huh? Because it's not cheaply put together. Love the natural glass at the back. Lighted, but very simple. Who's serving your food? My waist staff's over here. Yes. Very good. So you want... You want the girls dressed up like guys, and you want the guys dressed up like girlies. Yeah. Yeah? And what's with the tie on the girls? No, it's a, it's a fashion thing. That's sexy, with a tie. And you guys uh, in your black t-shirts, you look like ballerinas. Yeah? OK, ballerinas, go off and get your tutus. Good luck. Thank back you, in the chef. kitchen. Here we go. The pressure is on in Ralph's kitchen. There's no sign of Andrew, and the team is rushing to pick up the slack. What we need to do right now, Wendy? Triple speed, triple speed. Dewberry, those desserts, you have 15 minutes to get everything done. Let's go. All right. Well, one man down. You got one man back up. Woo! Oh and my God! God. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, baby. Have no fear. Stitches are here. All right, Andrew, good to have you home. As minor as the cut was, I only really did get four stitches. There's no way I was missing service. Not a chance. Wasn't going to let you down, buddy. Uh, I didn't think you were going to. Uh, Michael, two seconds, please. Ralph. Yes, chef. Quickly, please. OK, guys, literally minutes away from opening. Just want to say, well done. I'm really impressed. What you've both done out there is beautiful. All credit to you guys. That's why you're still here. And tonight's your night. I personally will be spending equal amounts of time in both your kitchens, shadowing you both. Not running it, not dressing, not serving, not calling, shadowing it. Your restaurants, your kitchens, run them your way. And remember, it's only one of you is going to win. Are you both ready? Yes, Chef. Yes, yes. Chef. Here we go. Yes, Chef. You have Julianne over there? Now dressed in the attire of a head chef, it's time for Ralph and Michael to take command over their teams. All right, today is the single most important day of my life. I have an opportunity here of a lifetime. There's only one person that can be up here, and you know, you guys have worked really hard today. You made me feel good. You know, I, there was no bitterness, nothing. You guys have really encouraged me this whole way. Those guys, it doesn't matter what you see, what you hear, you know that they're all going to be sweating. And Ralph's going to be trying to do everything, and he's going to be everywhere. We're set. We worked our ass off. So let's go, man. Yeah. I'm sure. Yes, chef. Do it for everybody. Love. Thanks, you guys. Really? Yeah, thanks. Good luck. Good luck. We'll do it for you. Uh, you're doing it. With your help, Where's... Jimmy. Dirty Bowl Jimmy. Andrew. Wendy. Dewberry. Chef. 
We've come very far so far today. We have had a minor injury and a little setback. That doesn't stop us. When we've turned up the speed, we're ready to go. What I need from you tonight is to reach within, to dig in deep and give everything you possibly can right now. Remember those rules of service that we talked about before, about doing everything perfect, perfection, never losing control. These are the things that we need to do tonight. I need absolute perfection and absolute professionalism. Can you do that for me? Yes. yes. You got it. We're in a tough situation because we can only push ourselves so far, especially because, you know, there's nothing in it for us. Let's show, Let's show them what time Let's, Let's, Let's do it. Since Hell's Kitchen opened, people have come to this establishment to experience Gordon Ramsay's world-class cuisine. Tonight, Chef Ramsay's two protégés will make their debuts. Welcome to Lola Pop. Welcome to Frank and Lulu. Once again, the customers will play a large role in influencing Chef Ramsay's decision on who gets rewarded with the opportunity of a lifetime. Up. Okay, Michael, Ralph, doors are open, yes? Good luck. No, I want to hug. Let's go. Hey. Good luck. Um, the main course, I'm going to have the filet mignon. I have the uh, <clears throat> butternut squash to start, and then I'll have the New York steak uh, medium. All right, table four, four guests. Two foie gras, one soup, one salad. On in second order, two New Yorks, one lobster, one duck. You guys got to talk out loud. We yes, yes, chef. Okay, team, listen up. Two guests, table two. One ravioli, one scampi. Main course, two filet. Yes, yes chef. chef! Thank you. The first orders are in, and it's time for Michael to prove to Chef Ramsay he has what it takes to lead a kitchen. All right, two steak, one lobster, one halibut. I have one lobster ready. Wasn't there one lobster on one order? And, I, and you told me away. No, wait, you guys, scratch that. Don't listen to what I said, all right? One seafood. Two foie gras, one carpaccio, in the past. Yes, chef. At the beginning of service um, with Michael, he actually got a little lost, a little caught up. Like, you know, he was mixing up tickets. It just, it, it got confusing. Don't look confused. Stick that, stick that New York up, up there, okay? Don't you want the asabuco on the New York now? Unfortunately, Michael's brigade has switched off, so they're now all cooking as individuals, and no one is cooking as a team. Secondly, it's not their fault because they're not being led as a team, and there's nothing happening. It's gone quiet, and Michael yeah. is not communicating with them. Bad sign. Well, guys, you guys. All right, one soup, two foie gras, one carpaccio. Despite Michael's struggle to earn respect as a head chef, appetizers are making their way to the customers. Meanwhile, Ralph is trying to keep his kitchen on schedule. Don't get rattled, Wendy. Everything's going perfect, OK? Just need, keep pans hot. Shoot, I need pans. OK, one ravioli, one fig, two scampi are on the order right now, yes? Yeah, did you Wait. just say one scampi, two fig? What I said? I thought you said two. Two scampi, one fig, one ravioli. OK, Ralph, I just need you to slow down just a little bit. All right. You know, Wendy, she got a little nervous, she got a little gun shy, but if I had to walk away from the hot pass to go over there and help out to make sure it worked, and as long as nothing suffered, I think I did my job. Where, where are you switching your shirt? Oh, I thought we were going to do it in the pan. OK, I got it. That's the part I was confused about. Ralph's very vocal, very confident, but unfortunately, nothing's coming out on the starters. So he spent more time, actually, on the starter section than he has on the hot plate. A chef never leaves a hot plate. So far, he's been on the starter section for 10 minutes and hasn't been on his hot plate twice yet. So not a good start. It's not full around. Let's get another pan ready for two scampi right after that, right? Now I'm confused. Even though Ralph's kitchen is struggling to get his appetizers out, he has a backup plan, his anti-pasto card. Snacks, cheese! <laughs> this strategy is not only keeping his customers happy, it's giving his kitchen some breathing room. An hour and 15 minutes into dinner service, Michael's diners have now received all of their appetizers. <laughs> and a little something extra. Then I'm like, and what then, this oh my was in my uh, mouth? Oh, no, it is plastic. This is Did you allow me to remove your plate? Absolutely, yes, yes, good. But everything was good and tasty? Uh, Michael, I had one lady. When she tried the pumpkin, it was a little plastic. They're fine, they're fine. 
Yeah? Sorry. All right, you get one time, and then I'll kill you. With Elsie causing Michael an embarrassing mishap, he can't afford any more costly mistakes from his team. Fire table two, two lobster, Jess. Hold on, I'm doing rice paper, hold on. All right, how's that? Where you got that rice paper? Yeah, I'm only one woman, though. Just, can you say yes, Chef? I understand you're under shit, I do. Yeah, you're not helping it either. Uh, I'm in my side, I can't give you the whole oven. Uh, what are you talking about? I'm not saying anything. Shut up, Elsie. Don't tell me to shut up. You guys, stop bickering, Jessica. Chef, if you keep yelling at me right now, I'm not gonna get anything to done. So just stop yelling for one what's, second. What's the problem? She's having a breakdown. Shut up, Elsie. Jessica and Elsie started bickering with each other, and Jessica kind of wouldn't shut up. She couldn't get the whole like authority thing with me as being chef. When you yell, it's not helping at all right now. We've been doing this for months. Just say yes, chef, and forgive me. You guys don't need to be bickering. While Michael is still struggling to control his team, Ralph's kitchen has now rallied and has pushed out most of their appetizers. That, that's good. It's good. That's good. That's, good. that's, good. that's awesome. And now the pressure is on Ralph to get out the main courses. Let's go, Dewberry. You have the spaghetti sauce ready, yes? Yes, Chef. Do not uh, drop the pasta until I tell you to. Yes, Chef. Do not put fish into that spaghetti pasta. Where'd you put that from? This. Into where? Oh, for this. What's that? What's that? What's that? That's a mess, right? That's garbage. Yes, chef. Yeah, that's garbage, right? Yes, Chef. No garbage here. This is Frank and Lulu's. Yes, Chef. Dewberry, give me some more black truffle. Black truffle? Dewberry, don't put it up here like you're doing me a favor when you put it up, okay? Put it up here like you mean it, all right? I thought we'd been through this, right? I hate to tell you this, but I think I'm fixing to pass out. Don't let me. All right, don't do it. Take some water. Losing a chef at this point will greatly jeopardize Ralph's chance to complete tonight's service. Dewberry, hold on, baby. Wash your face with some water. Wash your face with some water. Hold on, Dewberry. It was so hot in the kitchen, we were under so much stress, and I started seeing stars, and I, you know, my vision got real slow. Dewberry, don't die on me tonight, please. You can die on your own time. Yes, Chef. Let's Ralph, go. I really need to have your hand. I'm coming right now, jean Felice. Ralph, your food is excellent. But we need to speed a little yes, bit chef. on the main courses. We you need got to speed it. I understand. It up. New table ordering, two guests table two. One scampi, one ravioli. I need to see a new gear, please. I'm about to pass the fuck out. I go sit down. Who almost passed out? It's so hot up there. Is Dubarry gonna make it? I do not know. What if we put him on starters? Is there a little bit of a Die. That would be the end of that. Yeah, we don't want that. No, I don't want that on my shoulders. It's not worth the restaurant. Well. Really crucial time now. Unfortunately, Ralph's actually lost Dubry. Dubry's on the verge of fainting, right at the absolute pinnacle stage of service. Not good. How's Dewberry? Is he alive back there? We need him for the next table. Where are you, Dubs? A couple more hours and then the whole thing's over. I can't do it. You have to do this. There's no way. I don't know what you got in you, but you gotta find it. With the chance of winning a restaurant threatening to slip away, Ralph tries to keep it together. Andrew, what I need you to do is get over here, give this station some attention right now while she works on I that. Gotcha. Are we are in total control. Oh. What am I doing with this shit? I'm not gonna drop the entree right after the plates are gone. This isn't a diner. Doobie. Welcome back, Doobie. I'm not going anywhere. If I fall out, just kick me in the ass and push me back up. I'll make sure to uh, live up to that. Smack me in the ass if it's you, though. <laughs> okay, Dubri's back, so that's really great news. So Ralph's team is back up to full speed. So it really is a good sign for Ralph's kitchen. The tempo's still there. He's getting involved now and doing a little bit more of the cooking and actually supporting Dubri and bringing him back up to full speed, which is a great sign. Dubri. Dubri. Attention to detail. See if you the next plate one. it, taste it. Go to number six. Never settle for second. Number seven. Perfection. Thank you. 
he wanted to keep me going because I think he knew that I was tired, but it was what I needed. All right. This bath is full of fucking love. Chef, that is love for you. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. You are a rock today, aren't you, Dewberry? Yes, Chef. You are Gibraltar. You are the Hope Diamond. I'd rather you be saying I was Brad Pitt's wife. <laughs> He's got issues. <laughs> Three hours into dinner service, and Ralph's kitchen has managed to get out over half of his main courses. Meanwhile, Michael's kitchen is also pushing out main courses quickly. Maybe a little too quickly. I actually ordered it uh, medium well. And this is obviously not medium well, but maybe a little you know, less crispy. No, let me, let me have it medium well. Yes. The way you expect it. Okay. Uh, Michael? Yeah, please. Medium well. What's supposed to mean medium well? Jimmy, can I get this cooked up? Are you happy? Huh? I'm not. I'm not happy at all. You know, I kind of started off saying, you know, good job, you guys. Then there became a mistake. I was able to really just push myself and just be assertive. That's when the rhythm really started going. Go. Come on, you guys. It's not fucking around. This is not Chef Ramsey's service. This is my service. Yep. How long are the ravioli, please, Dewberry? About two minutes. What do you mean two minutes? I asked you before. You gave me two. Where are the other two? Got to get them working, Chef. Please. In their first Dewberry. dinner service as head chef, both Ralph and Michael are finding it useful to utilize Chef Ramsey's aggressive style to get the best results from their kitchen staffs. Jimmy, how long on that steak? Coming right now, Chef. Right behind you, Chef, right behind you. Hallelujah. Asa Buko, can you grow grab me a new one that's hot and then come back and play these beats? Thank you. This table is dragging ass. I need table 12, two short rib, one lobster, one steak. Yes, Chef, coming up, Chef. Thank you. And Michael, um, he's now starting to get a bit of fire in his belly and things are actually moving because they're starting to listen to him. The brigade are waking up and things are starting to happen. So I'm glad he's back up now because it's good to see he's not accepting anything and everything. Michael's kitchen now has its act together and is getting out the last of its main courses. Cheers to the chef. The chef was unbelievable tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Great job. Meanwhile, Ralph's Kitchen has served the last of their main courses. It's phenomenal. It really, really is. It's, you know what it is? I can chew it. It's very tender. And I can chew it. And I love that about steak. Two parfait, two cheesecake, yes? Wendy, you're way on table eight. Cheesecake, chocolate cake. Yeah. Elsie, you're free. You get the desserts now, OK? OK, what do you need? I want table one, OK? Yes, chef. Yeah, this is getting really hard, especially for me, because they're both doing exceptionally well. They're both on fire. Customers seem very, very happy. And desserts are starting to roll out now. Both Ralph and Michael are still giving a lot of pressure to their brigade, and no one's taking the foot off the gas, which is a great sign for both restaurants so late on. Wendy, hurry up. Coming up to you, baby. Three and a half hours since the doors opened, Ralph and Michael are making a final push to complete the dinner service and win over the hearts of their customers. All right, Elsie, I need you to push those desserts. We're dragging. Yes, chef. Do I have any more tables coming in? Thank you. Well done. Thank you. You guys kicked ass. If we lose, we lost, we lost fighting, man. That's fucking like The venue was killer and fucking easy to do. Seriously. Fantastic service, buddy. Good job, buddy. Thanks. Good job. You know, good job tonight, guys. We went out fighting. Only a few times I wanted to kill you. <laughs> no matter what happens, you guys really work hard for me. I really appreciate it. Come here, sweetheart. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> The lobster was awesome. Oh, thank you. You guys enjoyed that? What'd you have? Steak sauce on the top. Steak? Steak was awesome. Cool. Cooked good? That's my, that's good steak. Cheers. What was that other thing that I had? Oh, that was a pour reduction. With really the down. wine? Yeah, well, it's, you like, you, you cook it down slowly until it gets that, you know, just gets really thick like that. Well, you win, man. I appreciate it. Thank you guys very much for coming out and supporting me. Thank you. Bye, guys. I'll see you around. Thank you, everybody. Good night. After an exhausting 60 hours, Michael and Ralph's ultimate test is over. Now, it's up to Chef Ramsay to make one of their dreams come true. Okay, guys, gather around, please. How are you feeling? Good, Chef. Yeah, you've got every right to feel good. Are you ready for the decision? Yes, yes yeah. Chef. Well, I'm not. OK? Nowhere near it. <laughs> OK, listen, tonight, 
was a simulation of your dream restaurant. It came true. Michael. Yeah. You wanted an LA restaurant. Every customer out there tonight was from LA. Ralph. Yes, chef. You wanted a New York steakhouse. We actually flew customers from New York to dine in your restaurant. That's cool. OK, listen. Customer comment cards. I'm going to study these cards and combine that with both of your performances tonight. I am going to make my decision. Ralph and Michael, go back to the dorm. Scott and Marianne will come and get you when I'm ready. All right. Ah. All right, man. Well. That's it, huh? Yeah, this is out of our hands. It's all over but the crying right now. I have a slight advantage over Michael. I'm stronger. And all the kidding around and all the smiling is all well and good and it's all true. But now when it comes down to business. Stage left. There's not much about Ralph that I fear. He has his own style, you know, from years ago, and that was probably hip and hot then, and I think, you know, I'm trying to represent a new generation. Gosh, that was fun, man. I mean, we pushed it to the max, and the team really fucking came through. Tonight was a smashing success. Yeah? We got all our tables, we got all of our stuff out. All desserts, food tasted good, it all looked good. Gotta say, I was happy. I won this thing. What I did tonight and what I was able to accomplish and how I was able to push myself and do what I did, man, I've got the best feeling right now. I hope I win, I hope I win, I hope I win. I hope I win for me, I hope I win for my fiance, I hope I win for my family, I hope I win because I did it. The bottom line is, I came here to win. We did the best we could, sweetheart. I worked hard for me and you, baby. I did it for me and you. What's up, fellas? Hey, guys. I'm ready. You ready? Uh, this is a good thing. Make sure you can't see. Come over, you might trip over the furniture. Yeah, he's, I know my way around. All right, you ready to go? All, All right, right, guys, this is it. Put your, uh, put your hand on my shoulder, Ralph. Well, Follow me. put your hand on my shoulder? All right. OK, Wait. guys. Oh, I just got nervous. Oh, man, the angst, the anxiousness. This is for real. This is not for fake. This is all for keepsies. My heart was something. I don't think I'd ever been so nervous. And all these things that I had done th that day that I didn't think were absolutely perfect started going through my head. You know, I started sweating and just my knees started shaking. It was just the most anticipation I've ever felt in my whole life. Gentlemen. Remove your blindfolds, please. Congratulations to you both for being here. Tonight, I witnessed two very outstanding performances, and it has been a very close call. So I'm depending on the customers' comments more than I've ever had to do before. They loved your food. They loved your restaurants, and they loved the experience. But tonight, I asked them all one critical question. Would you return to this restaurant? And one of you received an amazing 90% of return business. But that wasn't good enough. In the other restaurant, 94% of the diners said they would come back. Amazing. Any new restaurant would be highly successful with both those figures. But only one of you can be the winner of Hell's Kitchen. You each stand in front of a door. Only the winner's door will open. And with that, the start of your dream come true. Michael. Chef. Ralph. Yes, Chef. Are you both ready? Yes. <sighs> Turn around and face the doors, please.
Okay, gentlemen, on my count of three, open your door. One. Two. Win, lose, or draw. You know, I've got no reservations about how I performed and what I did here. I did exactly what I said I was going to do. I did the best I could. There's no loser. You know, Michael just happened to win. I, for the first time, I feel like I'm in control of my own future. I've proven myself to myself, and that's important. I think that I've, I really earned the right to be the head chef that I know that I am and that I am now, that's for sure. As Michael was celebrating the win of a restaurant, I realized that an individual of Michael's talent that I didn't want to let him get away. Two seconds. Thank you. Michael, you have a very special talent. And, and you've impressed me so much that I now want to make you an offer. Yeah? I personally, would like to invite you to come back with me to London to be part of one of the most famous restaurants in the world and work alongside me to become a top world-class chef. So, Michael, what do you say? You know, I was blown away by Chef Ramsay's offer to either own my own restaurant or to move to London to train to become a world-class chef. You know, either way I choose, it's definitely a dream come true. Is that a yes or no? <laughs> yes. 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 Well, wow. Wow. Congratulations. Thank you. Absolutely brilliant. Well done. Ladies and gentlemen, Hell's Kitchen winner. Working with Chef Ramsay is an opportunity of a lifetime. You know, uh, he's gonna enhance my credibility and reputation as a chef. So when I do open my own restaurant, I'm gonna have a much better chance of success. To all my friends! Ralph was great tonight, but Michael deserved to win because his creativity and standards are simply on a higher level. And I accomplished my goal of turning an unknown into a master chef. And that has to be the perfect way to close Hell's Kitchen tonight. And I'm fucking out of here!